Hey guys, this is Iggy back again with Dragon Blogger. I know you've been seeing some of the videos I've been posting of me testing with the Alienware Area 51 machine. Some of you have probably been more interested to see what's actually inside this, what makes this, this machine so special. And well, there's a lot on the outside that just makes it look like a beautiful machine. It is a beautiful machine. And personally, I know that Alienware has been working on something like this for a very long time, even before Dell bought them. But now that Dell owns Alienware, they've been able to mature into an awesome machine, into an awesome company. So let me just take you inside, behind the scenes if anything, to what's actually inside this machine. So come, come over here real quick and let me show you close up. Here is the Alienware Area 51 computer. Beautiful looking piece of hardware. Just taking you around the outside first, just so that you can see what's inside. All right, so here, let me uh, raise the camera up a little bit. All right, up here we can see four USB 2.0s, four USB 3.0s, a Toslink optical connection, a SPDIF connection, and then three 3.5 millimeter jacks. Here is three count them three GTX 980s in tri-SLI and the 1500 watt power supply. You might notice the power connection looks a little bit different. That's to support the amperage that this machine requires. And don't worry, I've been running this for months and I haven't had a single issue with power. Actually, I found it generate, uh, produces a lot less uh, requires, should I say, a lot less power than I thought it would. But anyway, you can read that in the review. I will go over that. Then up here, we can see these little guys here. They're not any sort of hydraulic jet or hydraulic propulsion unit. They're actually used for this. With that, the side panel opens up. And I'll take you around that side. Right, and for the moment you've all been waiting for, the unveiling of the Alienware Area 51. <laughs> all right, so that's the inside of the Alienware Area 51 computer. You can see they have the video cards kind of in a 45 degree angle, let's just say that. So then they have a fan right up here, blowing air right through here. And then you can see here, that all that hot air that gets generated or heat that gets generated is going to not only come out of these PCI covers but of course is going to be vented out through these little vents here these little grates on the actual video cards all right turn you back around this is a big hefty power supply again 1500 watts and is fully modular providing power to the video cards and of course throughout the entire system up here as well you have air blowing down into it so that cool air comes and then it's going to provide some more wind inside of the case the problem with liquid cool which you will see that this is a liquid cooled cpu the problem with liquid cooling the system is you kind of get rid of overall airflow and that's one of the things I personally like about a CPU fan is it's going to generate a lot more airflow, you know, coming this way and out the back or, you know, however you might have that mounted. But that's generally the problem with liquid cooling units is you're kind of, even though this is sucking some air, you're kind of getting rid of airflow around here. These components still get hot. So that's going to help that a lot air coming down here, air coming up here, so it's going to cool down the system a lot more. Let's actually dissect this a little bit, see what else is maybe underneath these video cards. So first off, we'll take off the Tri-SLI bridge, which is an awesome little bridge, I will say. Very cool looking. Alright, we'll take that off. 
And let's go ahead and take off the first one, which actually is kind of reversed the way I thought it was. You would think this would be the top one, or would be the first video card, second and third, but actually I found that this is the first, second and third. Kind of reversed, but that's cool. So let me come over here. Undo this to release. This guy right over here to release the video card so I can get all of the screws. All right, and I'm gonna disconnect the PCIe cables. And now I'm gonna push down the PCIe retention mechanism and pull the card out. All right, so one thing, I can't pull the card out, reason being, this little guy here is retaining the cards, you know, for shipping purposes, and that way they don't bend or anything like that. So. I just squeeze this, then I can pull them out. All right, and I'll pick up that little mechanism, but see how the card's a little bit longer right down here so that it slides right into here. Very nice the way they did that. Another thing you'll notice is this card is backplated, so very nice. And the way they've implemented this little slot is screwing this piece of metal right into here. All right, nice little card here. All right, then we can see a little bit more of the inside of the case. Nothing sp special here, but we can see the little USB 3 mechanism they use there so that they can have these two ports up here to be USB 3. Very nice. <clears throat> All right, so let's get rid of the second video card of the three. Do the same thing. Push and slide. Push and slide. All right, and then I'm going to unscrew them. So that's unscrewed. Now we're gonna follow the same principles here. Squeeze this out. All right. And undo these. All right, so let's see. It looks to be like a specially, yep, specially made motherboard just for them. Up here, we can see the 802.11 AC card that's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And we can see over here all the uh, SATA ports that they've already connected for you so that you don't have to take out all these cards to get to them. Pretty nice, they did the uh, planning for you. And I'll take this guy out too. Whoops, I'll get that screw in a little bit. <laughs> all right, then we'll take out the PCIe connections. Squeeze this out of here, and then squeeze this out of here. Tight little fit here. All right, so we've got all three of them out. You can see a lot more of the case now. All right, 
looks like they had to provide a little extra PCIe power to the case right down here. And then right here and right here, you'll notice they've added two little clips for cable management. That's a very nice touch. And then right here, you can see that that's actually the antenna for the Wi-Fi. All right. Up here, they have a little heat sink for the V-Rags to keep them nice and cool. All right. And let's see what the memory looks like. Alright, this is Hynix memory, or Hynix, however you want to pronounce it. And let's see, 4 gig, 2133 megahertz RAM. So they have four of these, 16 gigs. Alright, you'll notice the RAM is not heat shielded, does not have a heat shield over it, the little metal thing over there. It's really not needed. Um, I've been working with these for years, uh, not only Alienware machines personally, but a uh, bunch of different, different boutiques, different OEMs. And with that, personally dealt with a bunch of these memory manufacturers. The heat shield might cost $2 extra per stick or something along those lines and it's not really needed. Now maybe if you were overclocking the memory super you know super high or something the memory might start to get hot and that's the other reason I love the the fact of a uh, air-cooled CPU because that CPU fan alone should help keep that memory down cool. If not you have this guy and this guy that is just circulating airflow and of course the liquid cooling unit sucking air out, so hot air out. The way they've designed this case, heat rises, as we all know. So the cool air is typically down here at the bottom, and it's being sucked this way. Then, now, we all know that, again, as uh, hot air rises, but it's rising out of here. So this, in the front, will still be cool air. So then it's pushing cooled air in here, and then it's all getting sucked out here and through these vents down here. So they've done a great job on that design. One thing you might notice down here, this little guy here, that's actually to control the side panels, the lighting effect that they've included in these cases. So the when I close the case back up, the case or the side panel makes contact with here and then that allows the electricity to flow through the side panel and then of course provide whatever sort of lighting you would put in the Alienware command center so very nice there and well let's see what's on the other side All right, turn this puppy around alright using the same little lever I showed you up here just open this up alright and let me show you this is that little piece that makes contact with what I showed you earlier to have the electricity flow and provide lighting right here, right here, and right here as well. All right, so here they have a Western Digital green drive, 4 terabyte. It's a 5400 RPM drive, 64 meg uh, cache. Now mind you, this is your storage drive. You know, while you can put games on there, you probably don't want to. You're probably going to want to put them on the SSD. It, this particular model comes with a 256 gig Samsung SSD. All right, And then you can put a drive here and a drive here. And of course, if you ever wanted to, you can use external drives via USB and as I showed you on the other side of the case they already have all the SATA cables connected you can see right here 
you can just pull this a little bit, connect another drive here, and then move this a little bit, connect another drive here, here's the power. So they've kind of made this really easy for you. And right up here, they have the controller board for the USB ports. Very nice. Again, 256 gig SATA SSD, or right, SATA SSD. And that's there, there's not a whole lot back here, but that's just to show you exactly what's on one side and what's on the other side. I want to keep it as thorough as possible. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. You'll notice to enter the case was toolless. All I needed to do was lift that little lever up on the top and it opens up. I should have done a kind of noise for you to make it sound like it was pressurized somehow. But anyways, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. And that's about it guys. Um, of course I'm going to put everything back in here. But uh, I just wanted to show you the magic sauce. What's inside of here. You can all see their high end components. I can't tell. This could come from anybody. Um, there are no markings on it. I'm thinking it might come from NVIDIA Direct. I could be wrong, but it is a nice looking card. And while you do have all of the PCIe slots taken and if not taken covered, the first slot is a by 16. The second slot right over here is a by one. This is a by 16. This is a by four, and this is another by 16. All right. Let's see if there's anything else I can see that catches my eye. No, that all looks pretty, pretty standard. Again, outlandishly standard. But um, this is what you will get when you purchase an Alienware Area 51. Now. This particular configuration that you saw me just take apart and everything it has inside, this particular one costs $4,700. These machines start at $1,700, so they are pretty affordable at the beginning. Um, another thing I wanted to show you, all right, this little slot right here is a SD card reader. Again, two USB 3.0s. I thought they were 2.0s, but they're actually 3.0s. The 3.5 millimeter microphone and head jack. And I know a lot of you don't use them anymore. You guys remind me all the time. But there is a DVD RW, CD RW, and Blu ray reader slot loading right up here so you can just fit your discs. Silver button to eject it. And this little guy here is not just for design. The alien head is actually a power button. I love. So, very cool. Again, the Alienware Area 51. Deep inside Area 51. So now you guys know what's in Area 51. And because of that, I have to get rid of you. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, I hope I let you see what you wanted to see. Very cool stuff in here. And anyway... This is Iggy with Dragon Blogger out. See you guys.